up you guys if you're new here hello my name is Brittany and in today's video you're probably looking at the title like bitch you don't like first impressions video what are you doing I personally don't I feel like these can be very misleading so I'm just going to warn you right now everything that I say about these products is just my first impressions I do have the tendency to change my mind once I use these products with the products that I normally use you know what I mean I might fall in love with them now and then try them with the original products that I use and hate them so just be mindful of that. These can be very misleading videos because we're going to especially be using a lot of new complexion products. Like we got the new Hourglass Foundation, the new Fenty Beauty Concealer, new setting spray. The only thing that's going to be something that I always use is my setting powder. And we have a new eyeshadow palette. Just a bunch of new makeup products that I figure you guys are probably curious about. So again, this is my first impressions. I have not worn any of these and just be mindful of that. If you're curious about any of these products, go in store, get a sample of them, or you could always buy them. And if you don't like them, you can return them. So just want to get that out there really quick. So let's just jump right into this first impressions video because my ass needs to get moving. So first thing is going to be from Beauty Blender. I did get this. What is this called? The Glow All Night Flawless Face Kit. This comes with a beauty blender, which I plan on getting one anyways. It does have the little powder puff that they came out with for like setting your makeup with a powder. So I'm very excited to try that because I've been eyeing that for a really long time. And then they also have the Beauty Blender Redo Set and Refresh Spray. So a new setting spray as well. So the first thing that we'll start with is the Beauty Blender. And I already know that I love the Beauty Blenders. It feels so good to have a new one. So the first thing that we're going to be using is the new Hourglass Foundation. This is the new Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. Now, I initially fell in love with the stick foundation. I'm just going to apply this while I'm talking. They say you only need a half a pump of this. They say it's very full coverage, so I'm not going to apply a lot. This is going to also be the shade Nude, and I did get this sample at Sephora online when I bought the Beauty Blender little gift set. So I'm just going to blend this out with my Beauty Blender. And when I watched the Insta story on this, it showed to be very very full coverage they do say that you should apply this with a makeup brush if you want a more full coverage makeup by mark was saying on their insta story last night that these are designed to be very different from the stick foundation this is going to be targeted to be more full coverage so less is more with this product and then they did say that the shades are supposed to be comparable to the vanish stick so if you have a shade in the vanish stick that you already love he said you may use the same one but you may also want to go lighter or darker so i would suggest like going in store or get a sample or something like that so in the hourglass stick foundation i do have the shade warm beige and then the shade that i'm using in the liquid is the shade nude i don't know how the stick foundation looks on my skin right now it's probably a little bit warmer because i am pretty light right now I feel like this is a little bit yellow, so it's a little warm for me at the moment, but I feel like this is blending out super easy. It almost reminds me a lot of the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation, except I don't feel like it's as matte as that foundation. That one is super duper matte, but this is designed to be a weightless foundation. Yeah, this is very yellow for me, so I would definitely need a different shade, but it's so lightweight. Like, I don't feel like anything on my skin right now, and it definitely has that full coverage factor. Like, I would use normally way more foundation than this right here, and I'm, again, using a makeup sponge, and I still feel like I'm getting that full coverage effect. And it's not really accentuating the texture on my skin either. I don't feel like it's masking it, but I don't feel like it's accentuating it. So that's always a plus for me. But he was saying last night on their Insta story that you don't need to use a face primer with this foundation because of the pigments in it. Like he could explain it a lot better than I can right now. <laughs> But he was just saying that they designed it to be like a less is more, very lightweight, but full coverage. It's just overall supposed to be very different from the Seamless Foundation. And I already believe that it is very different. Like the Seamless Foundation, I feel like is more like light to medium coverage, but it builds very, very nicely. This one is definitely more of that full coverage. And it feels super lightweight. And then I'm just dragging it down my neck just to get my colors to match. I am very curious about that half pump philosophy just because I usually use like two or three pumps. But just by application, I don't feel like I would need really more than one pump. Like this is, again, very full coverage. Let's see how buildable this is. This is always like my true test right here. I have this little scar. And then I always add a little bit more on my cheeks. I have that little scar right there though that nothing ever covers it. I don't know why. It just like always peeks through through all of my foundations. See it's still peeking through. But it layers really, really nicely. I do feel like this, I don't want to say oxidizes, but I feel like it, like as it dries down, it does get a little bit darker. So just be mindful of that. Maybe go a shade lighter than you think. Just because, like I said, I do feel like when it dries, it's not like super dry down though. Like I don't feel like it's really drying. Ooh, got a little pimple back here. Let's cover that one up. The main thing that I always look at with foundations when I first try them though is 
how they look on my skin like if they're sitting on top of the skin or if they actually like sink into the skin I feel like this it more of sinks into the skin whereas I feel like it's different than the Marc Jacobs Remarkable because that one really sits on top of the skin but both are very flattering on textured skin. For me, foundation is like the most important thing in my makeup routine. So I feel like this one, by first impression of it, I'm going to love it. It's just a matter of how it wears throughout the day. And I like how it gives me like that luminous look, but it's not too luminous because I tend to get oily throughout the day. So my first impression of it is I do feel like it is very full coverage, but I do feel like it has a very natural look to it. So I feel like all the claims that it's making it's definitely living up to that. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that. So next thing will be the Fenty Beauty Concealer. I got the shade 230. I think I should have got the shade 235, but we're gonna try this one anyways. So let's just go in. I don't use a ton of concealer. When I apply it, it does feel a little thicker. I don't know if I'm going to love this or not. Like I'm really picky about concealers nowadays. Like it does feel a lot heavier. I actually do feel like this is a pretty good shade. So let's see, we'll do the forehead and then I'll do my eyes last. I have a lot of texture on my forehead. So that's something I always look at when I blend out concealer on my forehead. My texture wasn't really accentuated with that foundation. So let's see if it looks any different with this concealer on it. It blends out really nice. Okay, I'm not mad about that. It's not accentuating anything, which is a good thing. So let's see, let's go in and do these under eyes. Now I do have fine lines and wrinkles in my under eyes, so that's one thing I'm going to really pay attention to. I always set my under eyes as well, and then I'll drag it on my lid space as well, because this is what I'll use for like my primer for my eyeshadows. That blends out really easy. I was expecting it to be way more difficult because of how creamy it feels, but I think the finish on it is actually really, really nice. My current favorite concealer is the Sephora Collection Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer because it gives me a really nice luminosity to my under eyes, and that's something that I really look for. I would say this is more of like a medium coverage, so I feel like if you have darkness in your under eyes, this probably won't cover everything, but for me, this would be a concealer that I would reach for again because it doesn't accentuate my under eyes. If anything, I feel like it blurs out my under eye texture a lot. So that is really nice. I do feel like it has more of a matte coverage. I'm really impressed with how that looks. I'm going to be very curious to see how this wears with the powder over it. But first impression of it, I really like it. And I feel like it complements really nicely with that hourglass foundation. I almost feel like though, like in this area right here, I lost coverage, so let me add just a little bit more. This is something I like never do. I never have to do this. I never have to add this much concealer though. It definitely falls in my fine lines and wrinkles, which most concealers do. That's not anything new, so I always just make sure I blend them out really nicely. I feel like even adding more though, like it layers really nicely. I feel like it complements this foundation as well really nice because I still feel like everything looks really skin-like. Like it's not super matte, but it's not radiant. It's just like a really nice natural looking finish at least that's just based on my first impressions of it using it with the hourglass foundation so i think the finish on it's really nice i do feel like it has a blurring effect as well so i'm definitely into it so that's my first impressions on the fenty beauty concealer so now i'm just going to go in and powder my face with the cody air and i am going to use this little powder sponge i think this is so cute this feels way more luxurious than i was expecting it to so I am going to tap off the excess because I feel like this picks up a lot of powder. So let's just go in and... And then I always powder my entire face as well just because that's what I personally like. So I'm gonna go in, especially in this area too. I'm really liking this. Like I feel bad and bougie using this thing. I was going to get the Fenty Beauty powder. It's just, I have so many powders right now and I didn't really love the packaging. Like I went in store and I actually swatched it. It just seemed like the product would really get everywhere, but that was, again, a first impression of it. But one thing that I really loved, and I saw it in Jeffree Star's video, it comes with a cap for the sifter on it. I thought that was genius. Like, I love the packaging concept. I think the packaging looks super luxurious, and it looks really nice. It's just, I don't need a loose powder right now because I have so many at the moment. But I thought that was such a nice touch to the packaging especially. So if you have purchased that loose powder, make sure you're checking your box because it has that little sifter cover in there. I just thought that was such a nice idea. Like I feel like Fenty Beauty always kills it with packaging especially. All right, so everything's looking decent from far away with powder. So let's bring it in and see how it's all looking. Like 
to me it looks real nice. It definitely made me more matte, which was what I was expecting because I do set my whole face. But that's where when I spray my face, it kind of brings the dew back to my face. I would rather have a more matte face. That way I'm not going to get like crazy oily throughout the day because I do tend to get oily in my T-zone especially. But I feel like everything still looks really nice, really skin-like, so I'm here for it for that. All right, so I just did my brows. I tried using this Billion Dollar Brow Universal Brow Pencil. I think this is the last thing you'd consider a <laughs> universal brow pencil. I think my brows are way too dark right now, but I just overall didn't really like this. I can't talk and do my brows at the same time. I was trying to do it, and I was just like not making any sense at all. So my first impression on this, I think it's way too creamy. I like a more stiff brow product because I feel like it'll last longer like my favorite is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. It's just really creamy. I don't really like the packaging on it because I can't get as precise because it does have a thicker applicator. I don't know. I just don't really love it. It doesn't compare to my Anastasia Brow Wiz so that's my first impression on that product and I obviously don't think it's universal either because I think my brows came out way too dark and I did pull in some of the Anastasia Beverly Hills soft brown just so you guys are aware of that but my first impression on it is it's not my favorite. It does not beat my Anastasia one. So that's it for that first impression right there. So I just powdered my face and everything. Bronzer, contour, blush, everything. Everything's looking really nice on my skin. It does look a little bit dry, but I do have to still go in and spray my face with a setting spray. This is normally how my foundation looks and everything when I've applied all of these powders because I do use a lot of powder. That's just my preference. I know it's like a new thing now to not powder your face, which I do really want to try that. It's just based on what I like and what I've always done, I've always powdered everything. So every time that I get done with my powders, my face does look a little bit dry and then my setting spray does revive it. So as far as foundation, I think it still looks really nice. It looks really nice on camera. For the concealer, I don't think it's the best. It's not blowing me away or anything. I do feel like there's better at the drugstore, just to be honest. So now I'm going to go in with the Beauty Blender Redo Set and Refresh Spray. I'm going to spray my hand first because I always test out to see how just the sprayer is on it and then I like to feel a consistency on my hand as well so I'm just going to spray my hand a couple times first and you do get those big droplets on your hand I don't even know if I want to use this on my face because I feel like it's honestly going to like ruin my makeup and then oh and then the consistency of it it's like it feels very oily so I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Just a fair warning, the sprayer does waste a lot of product as well. I'll pull it in so you guys can hopefully see it. It's it's a white consistency, so you really can't see it, but you see how much product is just hanging out down there? That's a major drawback. Like, that's a lot of waste of product. I do feel like this is going to make me look a lot more oily though. So just a fair warning, this is a first impressions. That's what these are here for. So let's go in, I'm gonna shake it up and then let's hope this goes well. Mm. I do not like that at all. Honestly, like I don't like the sprayer because it looks very fine, but you get those like droplets on your face. I can feel them everywhere. This honestly feels a lot like the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist, like with how just that it has like that oily feeling to it. Mm. Yeah, and you can see like I have droplets. I hope you guys can see I have those droplets all over. So I'm going to take my beauty sponge and just like pat everything in. And that just totally ruined my fucking foundation. Are you kidding me? That setting spray just ruined everything. Like even when I tried to pat them out really quick while it was still wet, you could see the water drops all on my forehead. Oh boy, that is not good. I don't really feel like it did anything for my complexion either aside from make it look worse. <laughs> so that is definitely a negative. That is not a good setting spray. I would not recommend that. That's based on my first impression. I don't feel like it did anything. I feel like it's very similar to that Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist and I have not liked that product. I feel like that would be better to prime your skin with it, which is something I'll be curious to try out. I would not encourage you guys to try that on top of your foundation. I don't know if you guys can see it on my forehead right now where those big droplets were and it just really made my foundation look like shit. So definitely do not recommend that. Like I would honestly take everything off right now because I hate the way that it looks. If I were to do that with any other setting spray, I would have been able to dab it out and it would have just blended together and it would have looked fine. That totally fucked up my entire forehead. So that is definitely a no pass for me. I'm just going to go in with a little bit more powder to help just kind of hide what just happened up there. And then I'm going to spray my face with a different setting spray. I will say like everywhere else that I dabbed out with the beauty sponge where I had the more fine mist, not those big globs, everything else blended out fine. It was just that main area where I had a lot of those big droplets. So now let me take my Urban Decay 
um, all nighter setting spray and just spray my face that way. Yeah, like this is how to spray a face. All right, so let's look at everything once it's dried down. I feel like we kind of redeemed ourselves with the forehead area. Everything else still looks really nice. I'm really liking the like glow that my skin has. It looks very natural. So I'm really liking it so far. The only thing that I'm not like blown away by is the concealer because I feel like I still have redness peeking through even on the areas that I did add more. So now we'll go in with our mini nude Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. So I'm just going to take my LMR Cosmetics Blending Brush and I'm going to go in with the shade right here. I think this is the shade Quoin. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And then I'm just going to work this right in the crease. If you've been wanting to try Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes, I highly recommend it for one because I think her um, I think the formula of her shadows is really, really nice. They're very pigmented. They're very expensive eyeshadows. That's why I really like these mini palettes because they're $25 for the minis. So this one's blending out really nicely. I really like that color. I feel like this one here is going to be such a nice palette for those that just want like everyday type of makeup, especially for the people that only wear makeup like to go into work and stuff like that. This is just the perfect neutral mini eyeshadow palette. I really do like the color story of it. And then the shade just blending out really nice. This brush I use all the time now. I really like these Alamar Cosmetics brushes. I think they're really nice quality for a really nice price. So this one, you've got the pigment, you got blendability. I'm really impressed with this shade already. And then I'm just going to put a shimmery shade on my lid and that's all I'm going to do on the eyes. I'm not doing anything crazy on my eyes today. And then I just got this new brush. I just talked about this on my Instagram like five minutes ago. I got this new brush from Huda Beauty. This is the Eyes Fender Blender Brush. I was eyeing this for the longest time. I was hoping it would launch at Sephora, but it didn't. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to buy it. So it has a sponge applicator on one end and then it has a silicone sponge on the other. So I'm very curious to try this with like my hourglass, like the um, scattered light glitter eyeshadows because I have a really hard time getting my finger in there. That was like the main reason why I bought these and I love a good metallic shadow and I feel like if you want a more precise application with those types of shadows I felt like this would be a really nice brush for that. I'm going to take the shade Lumino on the sponge side and we've seen these types of sponges on basically all eyeshadow palettes as we were growing up and especially in drugstore eyeshadow palettes so that actually applies really really nice. And it's kind of funny because I never really expected to like a sponge applicator but I really like the shape of this one. And I feel like, again, you could be really precise with your application as well. So I think it applies this shade really nice and very precise, which is something that I really like. So let's go in with the silicone applicator on the other eye just to see the difference. And let's see if this works with these as well. And it does! Oh, I really like the shape of this, especially I always have trouble with this inner corner. I think this is going to be so nice for those scattered light glitter eyeshadows because the silicone end especially picks up the product so nicely. Oh, I'm so excited for this right now. I feel like the silicone end gives you more of the finger application look, but I am getting a lot more fallout with the silicone applicator. I'm really, really liking that brush. It's so unique to my collection as well. So that's really all that I'm going to do on my eyes. I'm just going to take that blending brush and just blend right in the crease so there's not that really harsh line there. Oh, I'm so excited about that brush. I can't wait to try that with my scattered light glitter eyeshadows because I, again, have such a hard time getting my fingers in those pots. Get some on my face as per usual, so I gotta let that dry down now. And then now I'm gonna go in with a new lip product. I'm kind of cheating. This is still drying down. I'm going to do a video soon. I probably, I might film it today. I'm going to do like a nine brands I wanna try in 2019 and little spoiler, this is one of them. This is going to be from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Matte Revolution Luminous Modern Matte Long Lasting Lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk. I've heard so many people talk about this shade in particular, but this brand in general is like on everyone's wish list right now. I do like the design of the bullet. I think that's really cute and different. Super pigmented, so that's nice. Really creamy. I personally prefer a lipstick with like a pointed tip because I always have a hard time getting my cubizol really accurately. I'm sure talking while I'm doing this isn't helping. That did way better in application than I was expecting it to. I was expecting it to have a not so precise application, but surprisingly, it worked really well for me. I'll be curious to see how that lasts because usually lipsticks don't last long at all on me. And then let's go in and see if I can get this off yet. I'm just going to take that Huda Beauty applicator again, the sponge, and apply this to... Oh yeah. I could have used that on my inner corner. Alright, so this is going to be everything completely done. This is what we're going to work with today. I feel like 
there was only really one true Miss product for me. So let's just run through everything really quick and give you guys my final first impressions. So we'll start with the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. I think my skin looks absolutely beautiful. I really love the fact that they're saying you don't need to use a primer, which I don't think you need to use a primer anyways, but I really like how they have like the full coverage effect with a natural looking finish. I truly feel like my skin looks very natural because it does give you that luminous finish. If I didn't powder my face, you would be able to see that finish more, but the more that I'm wearing it, I am seeing that finish pull through. This is why I love this brand so much because it's like all their products have such a natural looking flattering finish on them. That's why I always buy their products. I think they're amazing. I think it's a really amazing brand as well. I feel like everything is also really thought out and that's something I appreciate as a consumer. So my first impression on that would be, I think it's beautiful. I would go a shade lighter because I do feel like it dries down darker. That's just my initial first impression on it, but I do wanna do a wear test on that foundation as well. So if you guys wanna see that, let me know, but I plan on doing it anyways. So we'll move on to the Fenty Beauty Concealer. I'm not like loving or hating it. I feel like it's an okay concealer, but for $26, I don't feel like it's really worth the price in my opinion. I feel like it has a more like light to medium coverage. If you're looking for full coverage, I don't think this will give it to you. I think it blends out really nicely. I think it's very flattering on textured or liney under eyes, but I still think you need to set it. That's just my personal preference. I always do that anyways. And I really do like the shade on it. I don't know, I feel like it was an all right concealer. It just didn't blow me away. I do prefer other concealers out there that are less expensive over this. So I wouldn't say it's a hit product, but I wouldn't say it's a miss. I feel like it was nice, but do I think it's worth $26? Probably not, because there are others that I prefer over this one. So not loving it, not hating it. I'm just not mad about it. So the next thing will be from Beauty Blender. This is the Glow All Night Flawless Face Kit. I do love a Beauty Blender. I've always loved Beauty Blenders. And then I really do like this. I think it picks up powder really nice. And then I do like that I don't have to put powder on this because I feel like it really uses up my makeup sponge more frequently. You can use a beauty blender. I really like separating them because I feel like it's going to be easier to clean as well. So I'm really liking both of these. This though, I would not spend my money on this. I thought it was terrible. It almost ruined my foundation. Luckily we were able to fix everything. So would not recommend this, but I would recommend these just based on my first impression. Uh, next thing will be the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Eyeshadow Palette. I think everything looks beautiful. They blend out super easy. I really love Natasha Denona shadows and if you're a basic bitch and you just want like an everyday type of eyeshadow palette that's a really good price for really high quality eyeshadows. I would definitely choose this because I think it's just a really nice color story. I feel like a lot of different skin tones will be able to use this so this is by far my favorite of all of them she's come out with for the minis. I really love Natasha Denona eyeshadows though so it's no surprise to me that I really do like that. And the next thing will be this new eyeshadow brush from Huda Beauty, the Fender Blender Brush. I really like this. I think this is really going to change the game for me for my application when I want like a cut crease or something like that. If I have pressed glitters, I'm so excited to try this with my hourglass, um, my scattered light eyeshadows or like my Marc Jacobs sequins eyeshadows, like all those pot glitter shadows. I am very excited to try with this because I feel like this is going to really save my fingers from having to jam in there and it will just help me use less product because I feel like I did use a lot less product as well with this and I feel like the silicone end really did help me get that if I were to apply it with my finger type of look. So I'm really liking this so far. Very glad to have it in my collection and it's super different and it was only 15 bucks. So for a really nice brush or tool for $15, I think it's worth it. And then the last thing will be this Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk. I think it's beautiful. I was not expecting to like the shape of it so much, but I ended up really liking it. Very like my lips but better type of vibe. Really comfortable on the lips. I don't think it accentuates my lip lines or anything. I don't know if it's long lasting like it says it is, but we will see. But first impression of it is I really like it. Is it worth $34? Mm, maybe, I don't know yet. I do know that Maybelline has amazing lipsticks for like $7. So it is a high end brand, high end price tag, but I think the packaging on it is beautiful. I'm really happy to have it. And I really do like the consistency on my lips right now. So that is going to be everything for this first impressions video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like these videos, make sure you give it a thumbs up or down if you don't like it. That way I know if you guys wanna see more of these. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for future videos because I will be doing definitely a separate video on the Hourglass Foundation. But if you guys wanna see one on the Fenty Beauty Concealer as well, just let me know and I can absolutely do that or any other products. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys in my next one. Peace.